I mentioned at the very beginning of this module here that we're trying to get traffic, uh, free traffic. In other words, you don't have to actually pay uh, to generate the traffic. That is true, provided you do the marketing the yourself, if you write all of, the, all of the articles. I want to give you the option, though, of going out and having somebody else do it. So for that reason, we're going to talk about uh, just a couple of different scenarios, either you doing it or somebody else doing it. And, of course, that is going to cost you. But you can write the articles yourself. Trust me, this is not very difficult. And you can sit down, like I said, in a week's time, you can have easily seven or eight new articles out there all generating traffic. And it's not going to take your whole day, you know, to do it. If you want to do that, great. I like to write a lot of my own articles. If I don't write the article, though, I definitely will create the headline myself because the headline is very, very important. And I'm not going to leave that to you know, just anybody to take care of. Again, one per day, four to 500 words. We don't want, you know, to just, we don't want to write a whole book. That's not the goal of this. In fact, if you've got a topic that is absolutely so intense, you cannot fit it into 500 words. If maybe it's like 1500 words. If you just love writing, a lot of people just like to write. That's great. But if you sit down and you can quickly just pop out 1,500 words, split it into three separate articles. I, I promise you that is the way to go because you get three times the exposure. And people will see, like if they see the first one, they're stuck. If they click on to the next article because they want more information, it's like they're stuck with you now. They're going to carry through to the end which means they're going to click on your link, right? Again, do not copy. It's bad ethics and it's bad SEO. It's duplicate content. Google is just going to totally trash it. Now, if you outsource, here we go and we go to a site like Renacoder or Elance or iFreelance, and we, we put out a proposal to have somebody else create the content for us. You own the content and you still put your name on it. So you're buying them writing it for you as a service. You still own it. And trust me, that's completely ethical. People do it all the time in uh, the book writing industry. Believe it or not, you look at a book and it's got an author's name on it. That author many times did not actually write it, especially if it's, uh, you know, if it's some kind of nonfiction work. A lot of time, well, with fiction, too, they just use a different name, but with nonfiction work, they will have other people do research for them, and they'll put together all of the research. They could have a whole team of a dozen people. They'll compile it and slap their name on it. That's totally okay to do because you paid them to do it for you. No hype and not salesy. You don't want this because, and I, this applies really to if you're doing it too, because when the when the article is being reviewed for acceptance, because these article sites, they don't just take any trash, right? They actually review it. When it's being reviewed, they're going to, if it seems real hypey or salesy, they're just going to not approve it, and it'll never get published. It needs to be real, helpful content that is genuine and original. So you make sure, and you've got to, you know, do a test. What I like to do is um, there's a site, I can't think of the name of it right now off the top of my head, but there's a site that will check for duplicate content for you. Uh, another thing you can do is, like if you get an article back from somebody, and we're looking at four to 500 words. These are not huge articles, right? When you get an article back from an outsourcer, copy some of the text, just do a selection and copy it, and paste it into Google, and then do a search. And if those words that they typed... You know, supposedly, if those come up exactly and you see other articles that have the same content, then you don't pay for that. You trash it and you tell them, hey, uh, you know, I'm not working with you anymore because you're just plagiarizing. These have to be genuine, original articles. What you want to do is use the keyword phrase that has been searched for as your link text. Now, the way this works, let's say, again, somebody does a search for learn to play guitar. On easing articles, after the third paragraph, 
you are free to use a link. And you have a limit to the amount of links that you can have within the article. Okay, so you have to be very careful there. You don't just all of a sudden start pasting a whole bunch of links. But you use, that if that keyword phrase is learn to play guitar, in your dialogue somewhere in the article, you're using that keyword phrase exactly as it is about five or six times. So every hundred words or more. Uh, so you're going to have like a sentence maybe that would say, if you want to learn to play guitar, you know, and continue your sentence. So you use the phrase just like it was searched for, and you're creating an article for each of the phrases that you're targeting, each one that you want to rank for. That text, learn to play guitar, you use that as your anchor text to send them to the site. So that gets highlighted. It gets the underline. It's blue. It's a link, right? And it's the exact thing that they searched for. In their minds, they're thinking relevant, relevant, relevant. Google is also, when they index it, they're thinking relevant, relevant, relevant. Now, you also add a link in your bio section. This is going to appear at the bottom of the article. You put your name, you know, and... There's a whole, really, there's a lot of detail we could go into there, but that would take almost a whole training module in and of itself. Suffice it to say for right now, don't do what most people do, which is give your credentials about why you're so awesome and why people should listen to you. If they've read your article and they've got down to the bottom where the bio section is, they already trust you and they already like your stuff. They think you know what you're talking about. There's no point in putting all of that stuff in there. Um, just what I like to do is I like to not put any closure in the article. Like articles typically have an introduction, they have the body of their content, and then they have a conclusion at the bottom. Well, I scrap the conclusion, and that's where I start the bio section. It just basically says, for more information on, blah, 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 you know, whatever, and then it gives them uh, my name and the link. The reason for that is if they've read through the introduction and the basic content of the article and they they keep going, they like it and they want more and since I don't give them that closure, they basically have to click on the link because they need that like mentally they're ready for a conclusion and they haven't gotten it. So, they need to click the link to go on. And remember with all of this, make sure you've got with your links that you're implementing the traffic so that you know where this traffic is coming from and you know what's working. Okay, now once we've done all of this, in the next video I want to show you how we can just totally ramp this whole thing up and we're going to even add StumbleUpon into our article marketing tactics.